Howdy, Junction family. I'm Chloe Mingers, and I am the co-lead of the Stories Team for Junction. I'm here with Erin Berkey, and we want to introduce you to someone for Testimony Tuesday. And this person is a table host and was on the Connect team last year, and her name is Mary Beth Graham. And so, Mary Beth, tell us a little bit more about your story. Well, so I work at Texas A&M full-time. I did my undergrad here. I love all things Aggieland, and I'm currently a part-time grad student in the College of Education. And I have two books in Spaniel, St. Aggie and Birdie. You might see them at some point. Um, but I wanted to share a bit of my story with you guys. So I grew up in a Christian family. And the summer after my senior year of high school, my family went to Pine Cove. It's a Christian camp in Tyler, Texas. We went to a family camp called The Woods. And I noticed really quickly there's just something so different about the counselors. They're college-age students, and they just they had this joy that radiated from them. And I didn't know what it was, but I know I wanted that. And so I realized that while, you know, I'd grown up as a Christian, I could walk the walk and talk the talk, but I hadn't really made that heart decision. Um, and so on July 4th, 2008, the summer before I started college, I accepted Christ and I was baptized. And, um, you know, Pine Cove holds a special place in my heart. I worked there during college as a counselor. I worked with babies, which was a big change from like being in the core during the school year. Um, and I absolutely loved it. But so something that I wanted to share with y'all that God has really taught me lately is um, I struggle with perfectionism. You know, just wearing this mask of perfection, like I have it all together and no one does, you know. But, you know, for example, when I was in fourth grade, I played the clarinet, but I'm like horribly challenged at music related things. And so I would hum the tune of a song and move my fingers like I knew what I was doing, but I had no idea what I was doing. If I didn't want anyone to know, you know, I wanted to appear like I had it all together. And so that's really been a theme, you know, through my life. And so I just struggled to cultivate this perception of perfection, you know, growing up in college and you know, when I was married as well, and just wanted to lurk a certain way and, you know, fake all the Pinterest worthy things and cleaning my house before I get on a Zoom meeting, uh, just wanting to appear like everything was great. Uh, and so especially went through my divorce last year. Um, when I started walking that really hard season, I didn't tell anyone what was going on for about a year because I was so concerned with what people would think, you know, if they only knew I didn't have it all together. That, you know, my perfectly curated social media accounts weren't really a good depiction of reality. And just, I thought if I could fix everything on my own, that no one would know how not perfect I was. And so no one is perfect, but sometimes it's hard to, you know, grasp that when you want to, you know, put on this perception like you are. And so um, I love in Galatians 5, um, with the fruits of the spirit, you know, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness. Um, perfection isn't one of those things that's listed, you know, because God doesn't call us to perfection. He calls us to obedience um, and to love others the way that he loves us. You know, he made us. He knows we're not perfect. Um, and so, you know, with grace, he, he gives it to us. And we don't deserve it. And we show it to others. We need to show it to ourselves as well. Um, so for me, if God doesn't call us perfection, then why do I feel this need to have this Pinterest-worthy perfection? Um, and so I am a super Enneagram too. And so I can get really wrapped up in what people think about me. Um, you know, people pleasing, wanting to be liked, finding my value and identity and what people think about me. Um, and certainly not letting anyone to know that I have any flaws, though we all do. <laughs> and so, um, you know, in that really rough season, while prayer didn't change my circumstance, I'm so thankful that it changed me. You know, it strengthened my relationship with God. Um, I found my identity and value and not what people think about me. And there's so much freedom in sharing your story um, and being authentic community and just allowing others to walk alongside you. So kind of walking through that hard season, I had two big you know, takeaways that I wanted to share with you all. One, in order to really know someone, you had to spend time with them, just like with anybody. And so for me, that's you know, reading my Bible. Um, there's tons of great reading plans out there. Um, I like Christian podcasts and Christian books. If you need recommendations, hit me up on the Slack. I will let you know some of my favorites. Um, and then just prayer drilling. I, last year, I prayer journaled a lot. And so I think it's been so neat to look back on just how faithful God is and the big things and the little things. I think sometimes we miss out on those little things because they are so small. But when you prayer journal, you can look back and see like just how God took a situation that you didn't know how it was going to turn out and just all the cool things that he did with that in ways you didn't expect. Um, but also, there's so much power of being um, involved in authentic community. And that's one of the things I love so much about Junction, the community we have, we've cultivated there. Um, you know, making people feel welcome, wanted, and known is not just something that we say. Um, 
but a part of being known is allowing yourself to be known. And so being vulnerable, sharing your story, your things you struggle with. When someone asks how you're doing, telling them how you're really doing. You know, if someone asked me how my day went, I would tell them about my dog's wrestling in the background of my videos or just something crazy that happened or grad school's hard, you know, just being authentic um, and allowing people to really get to know you and walk alongside you in your struggles, you know, and in your successes as well. So thanks for letting me share with you guys. Awesome. Thank you for sharing, Mary Beth. I think so many of us can relate to struggling with perfectionism. I know I can. And for some reason, it's like they, whoever they are, need to think that I am something. But really all that matters is who God says we are. And I'm so thankful that you, not thankful you walked through hard times, but thankful that you did because it does, it taught you so much. And so thankful that you're part of Junction and that you're willing to share your story. Well, thank you. And it's really cool to see that that shift and I think that's the fundamental shift is whenever you really start seeing your relationship with Christ as a relationship we, we throw that word relationship around a lot but it really is you know I marriage is supposed to, I think to like uh, kind of mirror that and it's like I, I always tell people like oh that's a good example of it it's like you would spend time with someone you're it with any relationship you have a friend or a sister or your mom like you're like you said you have to really know them and you have to spend time with them so I thought that was really cool well thanks awesome well thanks everybody thanks for watching bye <laughs>